Hey everybody, this is Kellen with today's devotional. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, the fact that there's no guarantees in life. And uh, I mean, if you were going to take a bet on anything in this world that like you'd believe it's a guaranteed bet, what would be that thing that you would bet on? Uh, in the sports world, there are so many times where it's like, man, if I were a betting man, I would, I would make this bet because I think I'd win money. But the truth is, <laughs> there are so many times where you think that somebody's going to win for sure and the underdog comes out victorious. Uh, maybe the only bet that I would be willing to make would, would be that the Vikings won't win the Super Bowl because as a Vikings fan, I'm just used to it by now. Um, but they're just, there are no guarantees in life. There are no safe bets. Uh, a, a couple of guys uh, who most of us know probably know their names. One of them, Seth MacFarlane, another one, Mark Wahlberg, both actors. They actually were scheduled, booked on a on Flight 11, on 9-11, uh, which I believe was the first plane that went into the, the towers in New York City. Um, and Seth MacFarlane talked about it in an interview I was watching that uh, he got there 10 minutes late. His, the, the person who gave him the, the information about when his flight was leaving told him that the flight was leaving 10 minutes late and he got there just when the gates were closing. And so he wasn't able to get on the flight and he survived because of that. Um, just think about that. There are no guarantees in life. You don't know uh, what's going to happen today or tomorrow. Um, we almost got into a nuclear war with, uh, with Russia back in September of 1983, September 26th. Uh, what happened is, uh, this is during the Cold War, Russia and America, they were, they were not in the greatest, on the greatest of terms. And at one point, a Russian, <clears throat> a Russian military person uh, discovered that there, there were warnings on their uh, computer screens that there was oncoming missiles coming in from America. Um, but he realized that it, it, was, it was just too few missiles for it to be a real attack from America. And so he waited and he didn't, <laughs> he didn't send nuclear bombs at America. And it came out that it was, it was high clouds that the computers, the satellites had detected as being missiles and it wasn't. If it weren't for that guy, um, his name was Stanislav Petrov. Thankfully, that guy had the patience to realize and the wisdom to realize that it wasn't a real attack. Otherwise, this world could be a lot different. Um, you never know what tomorrow might bring. There are no guarantees in life. And there's a guy I want to talk about. His name is Herod Agrippa II. And he comes up in, in scripture uh, during the story, the life of Paul. And, you know, during Christmas, I, I, Christmas season, I want to talk about characters uh, who, whose names come up in the Christmas story. Now, Herod Agrippa II doesn't come up in the Christmas story, but we hear about Herod a lot. Uh, different Herods uh, during the birth of Jesus and during the time of Jesus' ministry. Um, this was another one of the kings of Judea. And so Herod Agrippa II comes in while Paul uh, has been imprisoned for a couple of years now because of him going out and sharing about Jesus. And at one point, uh, Festus, who has him imprisoned, kind of talks to, to King Agrippa, Herod. He's the, the, Herod, the king of Judea, and he's like, why don't you come and listen to what this guy Paul is talking about? And so Paul gets to sit in front of Herod Agrippa II and tells him all about his conversion to Jesus, uh, tells him all about the gospel and, and why Jesus is the Son of God. And it's so cool because he goes through this whole gospel presentation, and at the end it says... Um, in Acts 26, starting off in verse 27, it says, King Agrippa, this is Paul speaking to him, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. And then King Agrippa says to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Verse 29, Paul replies, short time or long, I pray God that not only you, but all who are listening to me, to me today may become what I am except for these chains. Uh, he wanted King Agrippa to come to believe in the Jesus that he had come to believe in himself. At this point, there was no excuse for King Agrippa. Paul's sitting there saying, here's the whole gospel. You've heard the whole gospel. Now, are you going to believe? There was no longer any excuse in King Agrippa II's life that he'd never heard about Jesus. He had no excuse. You know, and we have no excuses ourselves. 
We have no guarantees of what's gonna happen today or what's gonna happen tomorrow. The only thing that we're being called to do is submit our lives to Jesus in every way that we possibly can. That's what Paul was trying to get a grip of the second to do. Are you ready right now? You've got no excuses left. Are you, are you ready to, to submit everything over to Jesus? What he was saying is control of your life, King Agrippa, is in your hands. But the control is not yours to keep. You see, God gives us control of our lives, but only to a certain extent. He gives us control to say, will you give me control or not? He gives us the control to say, will you submit to me or not? Every single one of us has a certain amount of control in our hands for our life. But the whole objective with that is to take that control and to put it into Jesus' hands completely. And so my question for you today is, are you giving that control over to Jesus? Or do you feel like you, you have more control than that? That you're, you think you can control every single thing about your life, but in the end, when you try to do that, you're only gonna come to realize that you, there's no guarantees in life. You really don't have any control. The only true guarantee in life is to completely and fully submit the control of our lives over to Jesus. It's the only control, that's the only guarantee that we have in life that, that we are going to have an eternity with him as we give him control. And so I just want to encourage you today, like think through, okay, how have I not given God my, my control? How am I holding on to control? Uh, how have I not submitted myself over to Jesus completely today? And I encourage you to, to, to allow your heart to be given completely over. Why don't you pray with me? Lord, I thank you so much for this story of King Agrippa II. And, and you know, he was unwilling to give over control to you. God, I pray that we would be different, that we would realize there are no guarantees in this life. I don't have the guarantee that tomorrow I can decide to give you control of my life. Today is the day to do that. In every little thing that I, I possibly am gonna go through today, help me to give over and submit my control to you. Uh, help us all in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for listening. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Uh, we'll see you soon.